Hello and welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, today I'm going to take a look at the diabolical Sudoku that appeared in the Telegraph um, yesterday, so that's Friday. Um, it's, uh, we've looked at it the last few weeks and it's always been a challenge. So without further ado, oops, let's, let's start trying to solve it. As usual, the notation will be uh, what you're used to if you're a regular viewer of the channel. So in each 3x3 three three box we're only allowed to make notation, i.e. include little numbers, um, if there's only exactly two positions in which a number can appear in that 3x3 three three box. So just as an example, look at this one here, the one here. So we know that the one is in the top row of this 3x3 three three box, and this one here isolates the ones into one of two positions, and therefore I allow myself to make pencil marks. Um, and in fact, look, we have an 8 here and an 8 here. So that means that can, we can place actually a big 8, a real 8, into that position. Uh, okay. And we're going to carry on doing this, um, making pencil marks, putting in the obvious answers, and then I suspect we will reach an impasse when we have to do something clever. That's what tends to be the case with these um, diabolical puzzles. Certainly we haven't seen one yet that's uh, that I would have classed as a, oops, would have classed as easy. Um, maybe today will be different. things that's a little bit frustrating I'm sure when we're doing these live solves is that you may be seeing things that are you know I'm not spotting quite as quickly because just looking in different places in the grid but this is all necessary in order that we can sort of reach a consistent point and move forward from there so isolate six is on this side of the grid I'll probably take a look at this row 8 now just because it's got so many numbers in it so we can see 2, 6 and 7 need to be placed and look there's a 7 here and a 7 here so 7 can appear in neither of these squares which forces the 7 over into this position it would be terribly useful one thing we can also do is to write the 2, 6 combination in to these two squares except I'm not going to bother here because I can see that this 2 is forcing the 2 over onto the right hand side so that allows us to put more pencil marks up here, twos, uh, we can't do anything more with the sixes. Okay. So eights down there, so eights down over here, eights over here. some stage you probably also need to start taking a look at the rows and columns that have less than six numbers in so you can see there are, I think there are two or three obvious candidates here firstly column column three where we've got four five six and nine to find a home for um, now I'm not seeing anything that's particularly helpful there um, we have a six here or we've isolated the positions of the sixes already, so I think we can move on from that. Uh, one, two, four, five to place in column eight. This square can only contain a two or a four. I can see that, but the my notation method, I'm not allowed to do that. Because remember, if I'm putting notation in, um, that's indicating a different thing. It would be indicating that this two could have only appeared in one of two positions, and there's no no similar two I can place there, so I, I sort of just have to remember that this is a double square. If I was solving on pencil or on pencil on paper, I would certainly be noting a two four. What I tend to do is write it on the lines at the bit at the bottom of the cell. Um, anyway, can't do anything with that. So one two four five. Again, this square here is also a double. And row two also. 2489. I've already got that one. You can see this square here is a 4 and a 9. So there are a few, few double squares that we're starting to spot. Ah, 
Oh, in fact, look, I mean, she can place a 7 here. I can see these two 7s. She have spotted that more quickly. That allows us to place this 1 in as well. And that's actually going to give us a few numbers. That gives us this 7, this 8. This eight. Let's remove the alternative numbers. You can see these two squares have to be four and five in some order. We can't quite see which way round. We now have six in column six, um, with two six and nine to place. Interestingly. Only this 9 here is helping at all with that. Oh, we can place a 4 here. So this 4 is isolating all of these squares. This 4 is preventing 4 going here. So we can oops, place a 4 there. Pencil mark 4s over, over here. Threes, two threes in these positions. Yeah, that's a three. This is a three here. It allows us to make more pencil marks over on this side of the grid. Mark nines into those two positions. Now, uh, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anything particularly. Whatever I can do here, two, three, five, six. There are six, six, six. Um, to go back over here, so that. We identified two doubles in this column, didn't we? So one, two, four, five. So this was a two or a four. And this was a two or a five. So this okay. There's something going on here. Um what I'm looking at is this square is a four or a five. This square is a 2 or a 5, and this square is a 2 or a 4. Okay, okay, yes. Look at this. Okay, so I'm looking at this square because I can see that if we ask ourselves a question, what happens if this square is a 4? If this square is a 4, um, this square here can only take one value because this square is a um, well the, the the total number of options for this square are two four eight and nine but we can see that we've got two and four two and eight here so so this square is a four or a nine okay so if this is a four this is a nine but if this is a five look what happens five two this is a four so either way around either this is a four or this is a 4. That is forced. Therefore, this cannot be a 4 because either it will be eliminated by this 4 or it will be eliminated by this 4. This square, therefore, has to be a 9. And that is probably going to be very helpful. Because look, now that this square has to be a 9. And once this square is a 9, this square has to be a 9, this square has to be a 9, this square has to be a 9, 
and this square has to be a 9. So we can now um, we can eliminate a lot of things that we've just proved regarding 9s in various positions. But what's more important is by entering a 9 in here, this is forced to be a 6 and this is forced to be a 4. So let's do the 6s first just to make sure that we don't miss out on any um, any important deductions. So we have two 6s in this position. Okay, and make any further deductions from that? Perhaps not. And this has to be a 4. Place a four into those two positions. One, three, five. You can see there's only one position now where a one can go in this three by three box, and that's here, which allows us to place a one over here as well. Let's make sure we're remo removing the pencil uh, pencil marks um, carefully. Uh, so we're looking at. Three five here, which I don't, don't think we can resolve yet. We can see this is a five and a six here, and we have a five here. So that's. I, I mean, I, I'm not absolutely sure, but I suspect that the step that we've just spotted there is going to be the critical one in terms of cracking this puzzle. So this is now forced to be a 2. Um, I've got to be a bit careful with my notation now. I'm actually going to delete this 2 and 4 and this 2 and 5. So I don't want to start making a mess of the logic that we tend like to use. These two obviously are 2 into these two positions. 3, 4, 6 into these positions. Pass your way through there, three, five, two, three down here. Which allows us to place this three. Four, six now. Uh, sixes, sixes, that's got to be a six. This has to be a six, I think. It's got to be a two, that's got to be a four, that's got to be a six, that's got to be a four, that's got to be a five. Okay, yeah. So uh, you can see now the whole puzzle, oops, the whole puzzle has uh, fallen, I think. It's now basically solved. So I'm not going to spend the time and waste your time watching me solve a very simple uh, end game of the Sudoku. Um, but there was a lovely piece of logic there um, just before we got to the stage where the whole puzzle collapsed um, where we were able to spot using and I think it, it wasn't too difficult to spot this time there were we got to an impasse we had this square I think it was uh, square down here that was identified as a double and one of the very few rows and columns we had with five numbers in it, we'd identified that there were two doubles in that in that um, in that column, and we just couldn't immediately see how to use them. But once we sort of got further, and you know there was nothing else to do, we had to think about how to use them again. And then it was simply a case of testing, and we could see either end of this sort of chain going around the grid it had to be a four, and that locked this square in. And from there, it was uh, plain sailing. But very nice bit of logic. I hope this was useful, and we'll see you again next time for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.